August 1955. The last paddle wheeler to carry passengers on the Yukon River leaves Dawson City bound for Whitehorse. The SS Klondike, operated by White Pass and Canadian Pacific Airlines, sounded its whistle, rounded the bend near Sunnydale Farms, and disappeared from the Dawson City landscape. River boating on the Yukon had come to an end. The Yukon is one of the mighty rivers of the world, more than 1,700 miles long from headwaters at Marsh Lake to Norton Sound, Alaska. The first steamer, called the Yukon, began operations on the Alaskan section of the river in 1870. But not till 1899 was there much of a business to justify construction of large boats like the Klondike, the Whitehorse, the Casca, and the Columbian. Over the 85-year history of river boating on the Yukon, over 200 boats plied the waters, mainly on the 460-mile stretch between Whitehorse and Dawson. Here's a brief collection of riverboat memories from some of those who worked, rode, or piloted the majestic sternwheelers. We built them in the shipyard, and that was right from 99 on. In 1919, was, there's 13 boats running. Mail, passengers, and everything else went down to Dawson on the steamboat. And they carried everything from flour to beer, beer mostly. And it was a big event. Whenever the first boat came in in the spring, everybody would run down to the town and greet them with open arms, waiting to see whether bananas were on board and all the fresh things that we hadn't had through the winter. You must remember the Yukon is one of the world's great rivers. It's a mighty river, and it takes a damn fine ship to work it. And these were good ships, and they were good men. I can remember Mr. Dickey, the chief, chief engineer. I can't remember the skipper's name, but the confidence we reposed in that skipper the old man, he knew that river. He knew it like the back of his hand. Well, they used to look like, uh, to me, like proud queens or brides because they had the, uh, when I was a youngster, they uh, still puffed the steam out through the smokestack. Later on, they put in some type of uh, engines that recondensed their steam, so they just made a sighing noise as they went up the river. But what I remember of them was this beautiful white boat with the yellow stack and the red paddle wheel and this plume of white steam floating out behind her from the bow area. They were a triple-decked ship, wood of course, flat bottom, a slightly uh, sharpened front end, and at the stern the great paddle wheel, which was a very soothing and lovely thing, that paddle wheel, because the ship's stern, you must understand, was one vertical surface, a great flat stern, and the paddle which occupied the entire width of the ship, would rhythmically throw water against it. And the cabin, which I shared with another steward, was right at the stern. And one went to sleep with this very, very soothing, plangent, plush, 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 the water being tossed against the stern. A soft yet persistent pat, 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 chuff could be heard for miles on the still night air. First boat. In the late 1940s, the territorial government set about to complete a road between Whitehorse and Dawson City. Freight could now be hauled year-round by truck, and freight was the primary reason for the riverboat's existence. In the 50s, river traffic dwindled dramatically. Many boats were taken out of service, left to sit high and dry at the shipyards in Whitehorse, where most of them had been built. The trouble with the boat was that it couldn't be used in the wintertime, and uh, you had to do something else about it. So then we began to put in the roads to handle the winter freight. In 1955, the Klondike left Dawson City for the last time. Oh, that last trip was rather... We didn't know it was going to be the last trip. And uh, when we got up as far as uh, Whitehorse in August, we were told that on account of low water, it was doubtful if we'd have another trip. And even then, we didn't know it was going to be the last trip until we came outside. And we didn't know about it until uh, we signed off and came into Vancouver. Then, just before Christmas, I got word, in case of uh, you making other arrangements... Sorry to advise you that uh, the poor old Klondike will not operate further. So that was it. Midnight, August the 26th, 1955. 
we didn't realize that was the last sailing time which would be posted on the dock blackboard. Still in costume, we left the community hall where we had entertained the tourists with a Klondike night and accompanied them down to the boat. She was lit from bow to stern, and there was a hustle of traffic between dock and ship, some of it official, but most of it frivolous. Then came the deep-throated whistle to set the echoes ringing in the hills, and the Klondike swung out into the current. Steamboating on the Yukon had come to an end. August 1955, last boat. It was the end of what was probably the most colorful and interesting era in Yukon history. <laughs>